Hey YouTube, Mikamu here with a um, video. Wanted to talk about, I uh, recently built a computer and so I knew going in I had a lot of questions and um, even as I was building the computer I had a bunch of questions. So I kind of want to talk about, you know, a little bit about my build and then going into some of the things I learned through this process and hopefully um, this will help you out. Um, obviously this isn't meant to be a hyper in-depth video. I'm not going to do a, a, a let's build together or anything like that, but if you want a little bit more detail, um, also I, I created a Reddit post on my experience as well. Uh, and I'm, I'm creating a playlist on YouTube of some of the videos that have helped me uh, through this process. So uh, going into this, uh, let me talk briefly about the uh, computer I built. Um, it built a Ryzen-based system that's uh, a system based off of the uh, chips created by AMD. Um, specifically used a Ryzen 5 5600X. Um, alongside a uh, RTX 3080. Obviously these are <laughs> very coveted components uh, this year. Some of the top of the line uh, GPU, CPU that came out uh, in uh, the quarter four of last year. Uh, on top of that, I've got uh, standard CPU cooler, Hypermaster 212, sorry, Cooler Master Hyper <laughs> 212 Black Edition, um, and a Meshify C um, case by Fractal Design for airflow. And my, my uh, motherboard is a uh, X570, specifically the MSI Tomahawk. Um, so it's a pretty pretty robust build, um, relatively decent. Uh, the only thing is is because I was, uh, you know, building and, and purchasing parts during the crazy uh, Q4 season, uh, and I bought my parts actually like in mid December. So for some of these parts I, I paid. A top dollar to have on time uh, before Christmas to do my my building. Uh, specifically, the 3080 I paid about um, like 250 above MSRP, and obviously I wouldn't recommend anyone do that. But I kind of wanted to leverage the uh, the time I had off. I, I uh, was off from my job for about a week or so um, between Christmas and New Year's, so I wanted to take advantage of that time and, and build. I want to go in a bit about the reasons why I uh, decided to build my own computer. I've been looking at um, computers, uh, desktop computers, for a while. Uh, in 2016, I, I was considering building my own, but I uh, ended up going with a gaming laptop. And at the time, it was powerful enough to run both the um, the creative applications I was working with. I do a little bit of, uh, of Photoshop and, and Premiere stuff, as well as... Um, music production stuff so it was pretty helpful in that regard and obviously uh, it was like a, a gaming laptop so it was pretty decent at running the games i wanted to play it was a mid-tier laptop at the time and so now that four years has passed uh, obviously it's starting to show a little bit of, of its age um i can play games now with medium medium low settings um and it's it's, it's decent obviously but i i wanted to kind of get back into both the music production and in playing some uh, contemporary games that were a bit more demanding and recording at the same time, and I started to see the laptop's age. So I figured that, you know, it might be valuable to to actually go in and, and, and update. Uh, and instead of going with another laptop, maybe it makes sense to go with the desktop this time. And so in mid-2020, like around June or July, I was considering going with a standard uh, manufacturer, either Asus or Dell with the Alienware stuff. Uh, but the more I looked into it, the more uh, obvious it became that uh, in order to really get value out of out of a desktop computer, um, some of these manufacturers kind of skimp out on components that the average person doesn't really think about or really care about. For example, so these these uh, these motherboards that are installed in some of these systems are kind of um, uh, they're not really very um, like optimized for delivering uh, uh, or supporting the components that are in the system, right? So you could have a very powerful graphics card and say an Alienware computer or an Asus computer, but the, the motherboard's not really good at consistently delivering a uh, power to those, those components. Um, or maybe even the, uh, the manufacturer kind of didn't design the case to have optimal airflow, right? And and some of these things you may not, maybe not experience problems with immediately, but but down the line, they obviously they could lead to uh, complications or at least uh, kind of performance bottlenecks. And so, with that in mind, it kind of made sense to at least 
uh, consider, you know, if not building, uh, looking at, at builders who uh, take seriously uh, providing a bit more transparency about the parts they use and about their design kind of philosophy and process. And so towards the end of 2020, I, I found some builders that I felt confident with. Uh, VRLA is one of them, VRLA Tech, they're in SoCal, and uh, Redux, uh, which is, is also in SoCal, I believe. Um, and Redux actually launched, I think, back in November. So they're a relatively new builder, but they are connected to Digital Storm, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but both of the, those builders to me look like if I were to purchase a desktop gaming computer, um, they're, they're very transparent about what parts they use for the most part. Um, they also have a relatively decent selection of, of parts, I think. Um, and so I was kind of looking at them um, before I, I actually took the plunge this year. Uh, towards the end of the year, like in December, I was I was actually going to hold off and kind of buy from them in January. Um, and I felt pretty happy with them. But I think what ultimately uh, pushed me over the edge was I was a little bit impatient. And I wanted to get the computer by, by this year um, with the parts that I wanted. And, and these guys were kind of not guaranteeing uh, the system until uh, maybe er like early in uh, 2021, maybe like mid-January. Um, so I figured, you know... It might be valuable to to learn uh, about how to build and, and um, learning really how these components work. So I kind of just dove into the uh, the deep end of the DIY stuff. Um, and I wouldn't say I have like a perfect handle on, on all this stuff, but it was really fun learning about this stuff and, and doing it. And so I think that that in itself is valuable. And now that I, I kind of put the system together, um, there's both a sense of pride and also a sense of understanding of of um, kind of what it is that I, I've done and and, uh, and 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 suiting my own needs. The other thing too is what I realized is is some of the stuff I wanted, you know, I, I definitely could not find at a parts builder. I, for example, want wanted lots of storage, and some of these guys because they're trying to save money, you know, and making the systems look you know affordable and reasonable price, they're not going to give you you know, a terabyte or two terabytes of storage, uh, at least not in terms of SSD storage. So I kind of just said F it and I, I, I sourced the parts myself and I started building uh, sort of a bit a bit of why I did this. Um, now moving on to kind of the lessons I learned, uh, it was a three a day process. It was not as hard as I thought it'd be, but it's also not as easy as, as I think some people made it out to be. It was definitely some parts where I, I struggled um, I'm not going to lie about that, and I was kind of regretting the decision, but I, I think ultimately it worked out, and I'm, I'm really happy with the machine I have. It's uh, very stable. I haven't done any hardcore long gaming sessions, but uh, I have ran programs for a while on, on the computer, and I have uh, done at least uh, 30 minutes or so of, of some gaming, so everything's stable, everything works, and it, it, it actually uh, you know, turned on the moment I had put all the parts together and, and plugged in all the cables. So relatively easy and straightforward. Um, I think one of the main things uh, I, I wanted to, to say is in terms of the things I learned, uh, I definitely think it's important that as you read up on, on the process and as you learn about how this stuff works together is that you actually create a roadmap, a detailed roadmap of the steps you're going to take as you're doing them. Um, cause what I, what I ended up having to do is, um, basically there's some times where I had to undo the step I just did because I realized that I, if I had continued, I would have gotten in my way. Uh, for example, I had to remove my graphics card about like five times, uh, partly cause, uh, the graphics card was a beefy boy who was obstructing uh, some of the cables I needed to come down from my, uh, my exhaust fans all the way down to uh, where the uh, fans plug in. Right. So I had to figure out, you know, how to route those cables around the graphics card. And, um, and I ended up taking out the graphics card several times in order to address that and a few other issues uh, uh, that were resulting from the graphics card kind of blocking uh, the way of, of some components. Um, I also had to undo my uh, CPU when I actually seated it onto my, my motherboard because uh, I put the thermal paste on and I had not put on my, uh, my back plate for my heat sink and my CPU fan. So I ended up having to remove the 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 cpu with the thermal paste all over it um that's something that was a bit more obvious and i should have 
address beforehand. So the stuff like that, if you kind of uh, list out in detail what you need to do, you have it in your mind, you maybe can avoid yourself some heartache and having to undo steps uh, and avoid the trouble there. Um, another thing is, you know, even though I, I, I mentioned this last point, you, you may not always be fully prepared for every single step of this process. And, and, and that's in part because, uh, you know, everyone's working with different components. And while the general principles of, you know, installing, say, an AIO are the same across most manufacturers, there might be some particular quirk with your particular product that you got to figure out yourself. And that can be a little frustrating, especially for a first time builder who is kind of um, expecting uh, things to be a bit more uh, standard, right? And it's not that it's a big deal, but it is something that, you know, if you're not expecting it, you can kind of be frustrating. Uh, going back to my uh, my heatsink and my, my CPU fan, I actually bought uh, a very popular uh, CPU cooler, uh, the Cooler Master Hyper 212. Uh, and, and no one really mentioned exactly how difficult it would be to put on the heatsink onto the motherboard. I had to push that sucker down for about five good minutes, and I thought the motherboard was, would freaking snap as I was doing it. And the fact that uh, none of the uh, none of the guides that I had encountered mentioned this, especially considering that this is a very popular uh, CPU cooler, I was kind of freaking out for a bit, right? But there's that you know variation in the parts that you use, right? So it's all a learning experience. There'll be some variation in, in some of the steps that you're going to be taking when you're installing your particular you know products onto your particular system. So just keep that in mind. Uh, as you're doing your building. And the final thing I want to say is your parts are, you know, a bit more resilient than you think they might be. Um, obviously, you can't go around breaking motherboards over your knee, but um, in terms of, of, you know, if you're worried about handling these things, you definitely don't have to freak out. You're not gonna, you're not gonna electrocute or shock your motherboard the moment you touch it, right? Obviously, wearing anti-static brace is always a good idea right and always handling your system with care is always a good idea but i mean i'll tell you my um my ram was not seated properly when i stood my case up for the first time and it fell out and my computer's still running right and it ran the first moment i uh i turned on the uh the power button so you have a, a bit of leeway with uh with your components uh my graphics card i think as i was pulling it out one of those five times may have scuffed my motherboard slightly um, but n nothing's broken. Nothing's not working. Um, again, definitely not encouraging you to to smash your motherboard or anything. But you can you can be uh, a little bit bit uh, you could be a little bit relieved that you know that there's some leeway in in, in uh, how resilient your parts are. I think those are the the main lessons I I would kind of think I found would find valuable. Um, of course, uh, obviously, if you want more details, I can do a video on sourcing parts, right? How, the logics behind how I chose my parts or even, um, you know, detailed, a detailed look at how you go about building a computer. Um, I think maybe I could possibly help with that. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's any particular questions you have or a video that you want me to do. Uh, of course, as I said, you could read that post on Reddit that I, that I posted or uh, look at the playlist I uh, posted of uh, videos that helped me as I was building. Uh, and that should be uh, good enough. Anyway, see everyone later. Take care.